right. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Amanda Marco, and I'm going to be doing one called Anatomy of a Pen and Paper. I don't know how to write poetry. Nobody ever taught me metaphors or inverted syntax or how to move someone through words. Nobody ever handed me a pencil and said, make your own paper. I never built a resume of finished, edited works. I kept rambling about the same themes, speaking my life through adjectives and similes, trying to communicate the human condition through hand gestures and vocal inflection. But when nobody teaches you poetry, you learn your own techniques and definitions. You learn that poetry is not a genre, it is a bodily function. The air exchange in between lungs and ears, the steady beat of a heart, setting the meter for rhythm and mismatched rhymes you can buy at thrift stores. It is deep in my bones behind marrow and blood cells, a raw madness trapped in a ballpoint pen released by my hand on paper. It's a relentless tug at my heart when I hear my favorite song. It starts with the world behind my eyes taking form in sounds and literary shapes, covering my arms like skin cells, flicking off just as often as they form underneath the surface. Sensory neurons remind me that when I give away my experience too quickly, it draws blood. Every ounce of me works to be whole again, leaving a sliver of glued skin, glued ideas, amassed memories and emotions of standing up for my sister and soaking in her sadness to the agony of being different. The agony of ruthless teenage girls poking fun at her physicality. The agony of being fearlessly artistic in a school that doesn't understand what true beauty is. They don't understand what it's like to be a person whose circulatory system stretches like tubular symphonies throughout their body. My mind scribbles across every canvas left blank, spreading words like hot breath in the middle of winter. Self-expression is an involuntary action, much like flinching at lipstick sneers and fists. I flinch at the format, trying to confine me into thin body, narrower mind, a vicious mold of thigh gap and flat stomach, pressing up against me like I'm too much for it to handle. So I think in free verse, rereading parts of me left forgotten, the parts where I tried changing, tried formatting myself to look like a cover girl. I reread the parts where I realize I don't have to change me to fit me. I'm the writer deciding how to live my life, the sculptor shaping my muffin top and thunder thighs, the singer whispering my personal lullaby. I forgot I could write my own story. And I want to share my story with my 13-year-old sister to have my life intertwined with hers. I want my words to guide her free verse where she has room to grow and not be strangled by toothpick girls and Hollister-clad boys who think they know everything. I want her to know the word kabod, a Hebrew term for glory meaning heavy and weight. I want her to write, to make paper, to ask me for a pencil. I want her to ignore insults because we aren't elementary slurs perfected by the average teenager. We are the writers, the singers, the sculptors, the painters, the uneducated philosophers, the kid in the corner who can spell ambiguity, the morning till night readers, the indecisive doodlers, the outside the light scribblers, the intelligent procrastinators, and the quiet ones who know too much. We are the poets, and we won't forget it.